Hi, welcome to Physionic, where we learn the body from the macro to the micro. If that's something you think you'd be interested in, then consider subscribing. In this exam and content, we're going to be dissecting this particular paper, looking at OMAD, or one meal a day, and how that compares against a traditional three meals a day without, and that's a key point there, without caloric restriction. So without any weight loss that should be administered and its impact on health and especially on blood sugar regulation. So if that's what you wanna find out about, then this is the content for you. So without further ado, let's jump into this exam and content. All right, as usual, let's jump into a bit of how they went about this study before we actually get into the results and can eventually get to our conclusions. So this study was, as I mentioned in the introduction, an OMAD study. So they had a comparison of three meals a day. So breakfast, lunch, and dinner, kind of a traditional standard diet compared to one meal a day. So that meal was consumed at the evening hours and consisted of dinner type foods. Now, the most important aspect here is that there's no caloric deficit in either condition. So the participants had to maintain their weight within a strict range uh, throughout the entire study. Now the study is a crossover repeated measures design, meaning that the 15 participants of which there was a mix of men and women, roughly around middle age, 40 to 50 years old, had to consume three meals a day for eight weeks, so had to stick to that particular protocol. Then they had an 11 week washout period where they went back to their regular diet so they can consume their calories uh, really just throughout any time that they want throughout the day with including snacks and things of that nature. And then they tried the OMAD, so they tried the one meal a day. So they're essentially, this, the researchers are comparing the participants themselves against themselves. That's why it's called a repeated measures design. And then in terms of their outcome measures, what they actually measured to figure out some of the results that they got, they measured the blood, by looking at blood sugar levels as well as insulin levels. And they also looked at a few other uh, biochemical, biomedical markers that'll give us some indication of the health of these individuals. So that is that. And with that said, let's jump into the ever exciting results. So the first figure is essentially just showing you the blood glucose or blood sugar levels at the first time point, which is the fasting levels, and then over 120 minutes, they did a gl glucose tolerance test where they gave participants that were completely fasted a set amount of glucose or sugar, and then they measured what happened to that sugar once it enters the bloodstream. Is it cleared out easily or is it not cleared out easily? And what we find is that with the one meal a day or the OMAD condition, again, these are the exact same participants just at different time points of consumption of either three meals or one meal a day, those individuals, when they consumed one meal a day, they had less glucose tolerance, so meaning that they had higher levels of blood sugar levels uh, from the consumption of this one meal a day. And this is after fasting, so this is not right after consuming that meal. So this is uh, not necessarily great news for the OMAD condition. In figure two, they're looking at insulin levels, so the exact same situation with an oral glucose tolerance test, but instead of measuring blood sugar, they're measuring insulin levels. And what we find here is that there's absolutely no differences between the OMAD and when they consumed three meals a day. So this shows that insulin levels are perfectly normal, 
but based on the previous figure that glucose tolerance is impaired. So maybe there isn't enough length there to actually show insulin resistance, but for the time being, what we can say is that per molecule of insulin, you're getting less glucose or less blood sugar clearance out of the bloodstream. And finally, looking at table one, which is the last piece of data that we're gonna be investigating, they are showing here the absolute numbers of a variety of different health markers. So some of them are the ones that we've already covered. So like the glucose levels, the blood sugar levels. Here we actually see a quantification of those glucose levels. And sure enough, we see elevated levels of blood sugar levels in the one meal a day condition. The other difference is an oral glucose insulin sensitivity test, which is where they're essentially testing how sensitive their, these individual cells are to insulin and allowing that glucose, that blood sugar into the cells. So if you have a lower number, that tends to show lower insulin sensitivity. So this would go in line with the previous data that we looked at, the comparison of insulin to glucose, but in those graphs, they were separated out. Now they're combining that information together. And what we find is that insulin sensitivity does decrease with the OMAD condition. And finally, they have two different phases of beta cell activation or beta cell function. Beta cells are cells or particular cells that make up the pancreas and the pancreas is the organ that secretes insulin. So it makes sense why they would wanna check that. And throughout the two phases, in the second phase where you're already having some insulin release, there doesn't seem to be a difference. However, the initiation of that insulin release in the first phase is impaired in the OMAD condition, which is really, really interesting. So it's an issue of kinetics in that situation where the OMAD condition is not seeing as rapid of a release of insulin into the bloodstream. So what can we take away from this paper? Well, it seems to show that OMAD is not beneficial for diabetes or just bettering glucose tolerance because you see decreases in insulin sensitivity and you also see greater levels of blood sugar levels or lowered sugar regulation. So in those ways, it doesn't seem that OMAD is all that beneficial. However, they did mention in the paragraph of the paper that and this is certainly an important factor, is that uh, there have been other studies that have looked at when you reduce the body weight, so you're in a caloric deficit and you use OMAD, that seems to ameliorate all the issues that they show in this particular study. So what would be taken away from this is that OMAD, if you're trying to maintain your weight, OMAD may not be the best way to do that because it seems to show some negative health consequences. But if you're trying to lose weight, OMAD may be a way, a perfectly fine way of going about without any of those negative health effects. Now we would have to actually investigate that particular paper, but based on what the researchers of this paper had to say, that seems to be the case. Now, another final point that I wanna mention here is that we saw slightly elevated, I didn't actually mention this, but we saw slightly elevated fasting levels of blood sugar levels. And most likely that's because they've consumed, the OMAD group consumed their meal at the very end of the day and they had to consume the appropriate calories to maintain their weight. So they're consuming a large bolus of food at the end of their day. So their fasting condition was probably a little bit less fasted than if you were to consume a smaller meal uh, at the end of the day, like in the three meals a day condition. So that's just a quick addition. So in terms of the discrepancy between the fasting blood sugar levels, I probably say that's probably negligible. However, it still seems to show an effect in terms of the overall blood sugar levels. So the overall blood sugar levels are elevated in the OMAD condition, implying poor blood sugar regulation. So something to consider, OMAD without caloric restriction is probably not uh, what you want to try. Okay, well, hopefully that was informative. And with that said, I hope I have the pleasure of speaking with you in the next one. Have a good one, guys. Bye.